Okay, so we are live now. So you are muted. Um, I have to ask, can you hear my dog snoring? A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> if it gets too loud, just tell me and I'll boot the dog out. <laughs> yeah. Now your host. Okay, Thank you can make you me so a call. Much. I'll make you a so thank you so much. Right. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give the dog a, a nudge if it gets too loud. He, he sounds like a freight train sometimes um, mm -hmm. when he's sleeping. So um, usually if Michael's on, then he's in my room, and then sometimes I manage to persuade him to go up to the lounge, but not very often. He always is around the bottom of my feet wherever I am. There's two dogs in tow. So... Um, yeah, we have some fun with those. I, I have to tell you, James, you know the bandicoot that I talk about all the time in my garden? Um, I always worried if the little dog went out that she would hurt the bandicoot. Well, two, two days ago, I looked around, didn't see the bandicoot, opened the door and the dogs went out. And she went straight to the gate where the, the dog is, uh, where the bandicoot goes out. And the bandicoot was in the garden, but it knocked the dog over completely. There were just legs in the air. <laughs> and the bandicoot was gone. So I don't have to worry about the bandicoot anymore. <laughs> sure. Okay, Here ashes there. Uh, yep, ashes there. That's lovely. Well, let, hi, good morning. Lovely to have you in class. You're just uh, still getting your audio coming through. There we go. Good morning, Asha. How are you today? Very good morning, Sue. I'm doing good. This is the first ah. time I'm attending your class. Oh, well, thank you. Welcome, welcome to my class. Whereabouts are you at the moment? I'm from India. Uh -huh. So your time is uh, three hours behind my time, correct? It's 8.30 8 8 in the morning. 8.30 in the morning. Okay, right. Yeah, it's 11 o'clock in the morning here. So oh, we are okay. also daytime. <laughs> Where are you from? Where, I'm which from part? Perth, Perth, Australia. You're from Australia. Okay, that's nice. Yeah. Need to yeah, visit yeah. that place sometime. Oh, you must. It is a beautiful city, a beautiful country, and my city is really beautiful too. Yeah, no, both my husband and I are guides here. So okay. um, so we both, we, we alternate classes. So it's really, it's okay. great fun. Mm. So nice, so nice to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I it, definitely it, enjoy your class because I love to have these, you know, little things in my garden. Great. <laughs> You'll see my garden is a gnome garden. And I've got little gnomes in little patches all over the garden. Um, I tried to order different... them online. I tried to order them online so I could do it with you today, but uh, I didn't. Yeah. They didn't reach in time. No, don't worry. You'll get all the ideas today, and you'll see there are lots of things you can make yourself as well. Uh, okay. So there's lots of things you can do. So just hold on one second, please. I just need yeah. to mute myself for one second. Right. <laughs> I forgot to bring the trolley with all my little gnome things on. So <laughs> I just asked my husband to bring in my gnomes and fairies for me. I knew yeah. I'd forgotten something. I was busy organizing. I've got a new computer and it wasn't doing what I wanted. And uh, so I was panicking with that. And <laughs> so I ended up with this. So, oh, thank you so much. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Oh, right, now I've got everything that I need with me. I, I'm going to start. Uh, there are other people due to come in, whether they come in as live learners or whether they come in, I'm not too sure. We, we never quite know who's coming in when. Right. But let's start in the meantime 
Uh, and today we are talking about gnomes and fairies in our garden. Uh, and not only in the garden, you can have them indoors as well. This little gnome is the gnome who welcomes everybody to my garden. As you come out, out through the front door, he's sitting there waiting to welcome you into my garden. I don't have a particularly big garden, but it's a garden that I enjoy. Just a little bit of housekeeping before we start. We learn from each other. So having your camera on makes such a difference. I've got James with me. He's my TA. He's my technical assistant to help us with anything. And he's wonderful. He puts all sorts of things in the chat box um, about different things as we go along. He's a fountain of knowledge. So it's really great. He always adds to the class. If you want to request a recording, you can do that at helpitgetsetup.io. And if you're joining by live streaming, you can watch with pleasure, but you can't take part. So it's much better to actually register and take part in class. And lastly, we do, are not paid to promote any product. So if we mention anything, it's purely something I use. A little bit about me. <clears throat> I live in Perth, Australia. I moved here three years ago from South Africa uh, to help look after some of my granddaughters. Uh, I've been an educator for 44 years. I still teach, but here in Get Set Up, I just share. I share ideas, I share everything, and have fun communicating with my peers. So for me, Get Set Up is wonderful. I enjoy creating and making things, including puzzles, and have a great love of animals. That's why I do the animal series as well. So let's have a look. Today we're going to do fairy garden ideas, gnome garden ideas, combination ideas, and all about the plants that you can use in your fairy and gnome gardens. Now if you look at these pictures here, you can see they are using things like broken pots you might have a pot that broke. Don't throw it out. Use the pieces and place them inside something else. And you can then make a two-tier garden or a three-tier garden out of it. And you can have fairies on one level and gnomes on another level. And they can all live in harmony. In, and this can be indoors or outdoors. You can also do bigger ones with um, hanging baskets that you no longer use as a hanging basket. You can put that, take a pole and attach them to a pole and make them on different levels. So these are smaller gardens, but we're going to go large shortly. So th these are just some of the ideas. So what is one thing you're hoping to learn, Asha? What would you like to learn from this class? Uh, yes, to make a uh, little, you know, the pot gardens, like in a tray, mm -hmm. a tray garden. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, outside, I have a little terrace here. It's not too big uh, mm -hmm. because we live in a building, in an apartment. So yes, anything. I, I love these little, little features that we can do. I have made a few in my house also, but uh, yes, learning oh. is, you know, you, I love to learn. Well, when you've, when you've got time, take some photos and send them to me on Get Set Up. Then I can include them. I want to, each, each of the things I do, I make a wall from the people. And then when the wall has a few things in, I include it in the presentation, showing you what others have been able to make. Yeah, and so it, it makes it into something really special. So mm -hmm. please re remember and think, think about that one along the way. Now, let's have a look. Um, when I started to research fairy and non gnome gardens, I realized there was so much more to creating these amazing gardens. I always thought of something small and but no, there are so many ways. Look at that, those trees in the garden. Those are trees in somebody's garden and they've turned them into the most awesome, almost like a magical tree. You wonder who lives at the top. Um, and they've just put little ladders onto the tree, little doorways onto the tree. And you can 
You either make them out of plaster of Paris by putting them around a bottle, or you can buy them ready-made. Uh, let me just stop sharing for a second. You can, uh, what do I need to do with myself here? Uh, because I've, I've got a, let me just go to speaker view here. Um, okay, it's gone to you as the speaker, so that's not going to work. Uh, okay, gallery with you again. Uh, I must hold it in front of my nose, that's the way. <laughs> All right. So now we've got, uh, so you can see that uh, you are, can okay, just buy them or just taking a piece of plaster Paris or, or clay, you buy that clay, you put it around a bottle or a pot or anything, and then you stick on stones and moss on, onto it, and you can paint doors on it and really turn it into something very special. So it, it's a lovely way of being able to have a little garden, a fairy garden. But you can really see from this that the sky's the limit as to where you can go and how you can do it. So you can go from the tallest tree in your garden. Um, I don't know whether, I'm sure in India they've they probably had the books by Enid Blyton. They would have been translated. And there was one called The Faraway Tree. And this tree had people living in it all the way up to a magic land at the top. Now, any child who's read that and they see a tree like this or any adult that sees a tree like this is reminded of that book. And you wonder who lives on each level in there and where does that tree go? Does it have a land at the top? So it's, it's a very... Yeah. Uh, one yeah. minute, Steve. Uh, uh, as you're showing the pictures, am I allowed to click the pictures with my camera? Yes, with pleasure. Yes, oh. I don't. I have no problem with that at all. But you can also request a recording, and then you can look at them slowly for yourself as well. Okay. But Would I they have, give I all have, this in the recording? Yes. They give yes. The you get the ex you get the exact recording, so okay, you'll be I'll able to go right through that. And yeah, then beautiful. You can do it. But aren't they gorgeous? I mean, they're such gorgeous. so exciting and different yeah. that you can make. And then good you can start go of the morning. That's a beautiful yeah. start of the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you walk out and have your cup of coffee under there and put a chair there and just sit and look. And you can imagine so many things there. But you can go from the tallest tree to a teacup. So you're going from one end to another. So you can make your fairy garden as small as a teacup and as big as the tallest tree in the garden. So you can really do so many things with it. Now, at the bottom of a tree, you can just set up something very tiny at the bottom of the tree, just a single door. And with a few little steps going up to that door, who lives there? What's there? that anybody coming into your garden will say, who's there? Even if they don't believe in gnomes and fairies, the first thing they'll do is go, who lives there? Um, because it's, it's a natural uh, imagination that everybody does have. They have an inherent one, even if they don't want to believe too much. But another lovely way is if you've got a, a wall where you've, you've got a level and now you've made a, a little retaining wall for the next level, you can use that little retaining wall to create a whole little garden there with a house and stairs. And you can make <clears throat> most of these things out of popsicle sticks and um toothpicks and so on you can build so many things and then if you just cover them in uh, paint them in waterproof paint they are going to last but you can see what people have used here um right in the front here it's it's actually the inside of a um a plug that they've used and then they put the plant coming through the plug and it just made a feature so you can use things that you've got in your home to add to your garden and turn it into a fairy garden, a gnome garden. It doesn't have to be big. It can be small. It can be just a tiny corner of your garden. My garden is only uh, probably six meters by four meters. It's not a big garden, but we've got all sorts of things 
in the garden that make for a lovely, to allow the magic to grow. Now, you can use old things to make something new. If you take an old wheelbarrow that's now rusted and you really can't use it as a wheelbarrow anymore, it's ideal as a garden. You can just put some mesh underneath so that the soil doesn't fall through the holes, but the water can go through. Put your soil in and you can create a beautiful fairy garden uh, in the wheelbarrow. And if you put it next to a tree, you can actually have them going from the garden up into the tree as a combination. The second picture has got an old pot that is broken. It's collapsed. It's finished. What they've done is they've taken the base of the pot and used that, the, the piece that you would stand the pot in, and that's your base. And then using the pot, they've kept the back of the pot that was secure and taken the pieces to make the different levels of your garden. And so you end up with a garden that is made up of a variety of levels going up. And you can put little um, stairways going up. You can use um, little pieces like this. And they can be made as stairs. You can buy them or you can make them with wire yourself. And you can build yourself a set of stairs um, using popsicle sticks. And then if you've got your stairs, you can then create them. You can make um, bridges. You can make all sorts of things. You can also use um, old plastic forks. Instead of throwing them out, you turn the tines so that they're facing upwards and they make the fence. So you've got all these forks sitting next to each other. You plant the, the stem of the fork in the ground and you've got the pointy pieces that you would eat with as you make up your fence. So you can then have a little plastic fence made of just forks put next to each other. And it makes it into such a fun, interesting um, way of doing your garden. So use things that you've got around, things that you are about to toss out. Before you toss them, think how you can change it and how you can make it into um, a garden. I do send you notes on how to make a fairy house out of old cool drink bottles. And I give you a step-by-step -step way of making your garden out of old cool drink bottles, uh, your house out of old cool drink bottles. So you can really create and make. Now, this is my gnome garden. I have um, gnomes in different places around my garden. I, uh, on the little back wall, I have planters. And in each planter, there's a gnome sitting reading his book and overlooking the garden. Under the bird bath, I've got little gnomes playing in there with the plants. Uh, I've taken wood from, we've got a little forest nearby, they call it a reserve, and um, we fetch the wood from the reserve, the interesting pieces that I like, and I then place it and plant plants around it and put my gnomes having fun in the wood. So my, my little gnomes are in a variety of small places around the garden. Um, uh, other pieces of wood, I've got this little gnome and around him, you can't quite see it, there are a whole lot of gnomes all playing in the garden there in front of that piece of wood. So use nature, where you can find pieces of nature that are interesting, use it, take it and create something magical from it. It, is, it doesn't have to be big, it can be small. But if you do that, you can create a wonderful, magical garden of your own. All right. Any questions? Any thoughts? Lots of thoughts. <laughs> Lots of thoughts. Good. Lots of thoughts on how I'm going to create it now, you know. Oh, I have another sister-in-law who's in the uh, U.S., in Boston. She loves these things. So when I get the recording, I can share it with her because she has a backyard and everything. She would oh, love the tree yes. thing. We don't have trees here, but she would definitely love it. Oh, excellent. Well, the more beautiful. we can share. This really, yeah, this is really beautiful. Yeah. Oh, 
great. I so that chanced upon, I just chanced upon uh, your session, but uh, I don't see it very often. So uh, it would be nice again if you have something like this. I'll definitely be there. Well, what you do is the best way to, to, to find out all the things that I've got and I'm doing is when you go into looking at classes, if you put my name at the top, I'll do it'll that bring now. up all my classes and all the different things that I make and do and uh, the conversations we have and like what's yeah. on my bucket list. And uh, so we have some talk ones okay. as well. One, I'll show you. Oh, wonderful. It's just a small one, but I don't know if you can see it. Just lift it up a little. Just lift it higher. Oh, wow. Yes. Oh, I love that. That is so beautiful. Oh, and look, you've got, you've, is, is, that, is that Vishnu that you've got there? Buddha. 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 Mm -hmm. now, I, have uh, there. I put a little pot in that and made a, a dish garden. I'll just come in a minute. Okay, no problem. Someone at the door. Okay, no problem at all. All uh, right. Yes, it's a lot of lot to learn. I mean, it's uh, I'm getting really excited to start on something. <laughs> good, good. That is fantastic. Um, that that will be really great. Now, now we're looking at multi-story. You don't have to only be flat. You can build up. And if you've got a small area, I, it's ideal to build a, a three-story or two-story um, little creation because it gives height as as well. So you can use old um, troughs and buckets that you had and old pots to create a three-story or just taking a single broken pot and building up so that it, they climb up all the way to the top where they can sit at the top. And we'll talk about the plants you can put in here as well. You can use any kind of containers, either broken or whole, to come up with wonderful ideas as to how to build. And you can see little fences are there. Um, little, you can make little ponds using lids of um, uh, uh, bottle lids. You can turn bottle lids into them. Uh, there comes Shirley. Uh, hi, Shirley. <laughs> Shirley is a regular in class. Lovely to see you Hello. today again. Hi, lovely to have you in class again. Uh, how are you today? I'm, I'm not too bad. It's very hot here. Like it's uh, about, uh, it's, it's 24 out, I think. 24 wow. Celsius. That, that's, oh. yeah, that, that is getting getting warm. Probably, what is it in Fahrenheit? Um. I don't know. Hang on. Because <laughs> I know we get to 104 Fahrenheit in summer, which is 42, 43. We can get that high. And this is about 90, I think. About 90. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's getting hot. You're getting very hot. You're well yeah. in the 30s. All right. No wonder. Just keep drinking. Just keep drinking, Shirley. Just it's, keep it's drinking. It's only 75 Fahrenheit, but it's a very dry heat. Mm, and that, that tires you. So keep drinking, please. Oh, yeah. We don't yeah. want you to dehydrate. Oh, no, All right. no, 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 no. I drink All lots. Right. Shirley, we're talking about multi-story little homes that we've got here where you can use any type of container or broken container to build your different levels of your gardens. So you don't have to only have a flat garden. And at each level, you can decide whether you're going to do 
animals, fairies, gnomes. You can have different things in between. You can build little little gardens, uh, little water features. Uh, just put some stones onto a um, a lid of a bottle. If you stick st stones around the top of the lid, it makes a water feature, and then you can just plant it as as a little pond. So you've got all sorts of little things. I will show you some things to make just now uh, along the way. And it, it really is great that we can create and build some of these really beautiful little creations. There are lots of small plants that we can also plant. And as I say, we'll talk about those shortly. But as you go along, create, uh, you'll find you set out with one idea. And as you're going, suddenly you think, no, that's not right. I need to add this or, oh, what about that? And slowly you'll add more and more things. And if you go on to Pinterest, you can find some amazing ideas. I have a whole, um, I've got a Pinterest page. and One of my sections is all about gnome and fairy gardens. But even if you just go into Pinterest oh. and type in fairy gardens, you come up with awesome ideas to add to what you've already got. Right, now, let's see. We're going to build our own garden. Now, in building your own garden, you need to think about what sort of plants you want and what what sort of picture you have in your mind? Is it going to be a place where people are going to go and sit, the little fairies and gnomes are going to sit? Or is it going to be a place uh, outside where you're going to go and sit nearby and look at the beautiful things like we saw in the um, wheelbarrow and so on? So you decide what you want to put and the ideas, if you've got a little bit of soil, what you can use, like succulents. If you've got a lot of soil, what you can use. But remember, never put too much soil because if there's only a little soil, the plants won't grow too big. They grow according to where their roots can go. So very often, it's a good idea to keep the plant in a pot and plant the pot because then the roots are contained and then it stays small and you don't have to keep trimming it to keep it the right size for you to be able to use. You can use coins for your um, stepping stones. You can use bottle tops for your stepping stones. You can use all sorts of different things. Think about things as you're going around the house as to what I could use to make my garden look unique because every garden that is made is unique. And so you are creating a part of you. So you are thinking about things that mean something to you or you think are attractive. And those are the things you will put into your fairy garden. And just some of the plants would be your balsam, your asparagus fern, your moss rose, Little impatience, they've got lovely little flowers on them. Uh, scotch moss, verbena also. Hen and chicken, as long as you keep nipping it in the buds, otherwise it will really take over. Uh, and uh, Salonia, so, uh, Salosia, uh, that is, it has got a red top to it, so it looks like a tufty flower. Uh, and all of those make really pretty small plants in a garden. <clears throat> so let's look at the plants in detail and see what we can do. We can plant a variety of things and some of them we can use as well. So if you're wanting to plant herby type things, then you do creeping thyme or woolly thyme or dwarf rosemary or chives. And they, they stay small and they you can plant in your garden and they crawl <laughs> along and make a covering for you uh, along the way. You can also plant carrots and have little baby carrots because you want the top. You don't really want the carrot. You want the top of the carrot because it makes a wonderful greenery at the top. Uh, and then you can also use strawberries. They make a lovely thing. And if you are making a fairly large garden, like one in a uh, wheelbarrow type size, 
then you can actually plant little baby cherry tomatoes. And then you can eat those tomatoes afterwards because they don't grow too tall in their pot. And you can have a little ladder going up and you can have a, a fairy halfway up the ladder helping herself to the, the little cherry tomatoes. Or you can have a gnome peeping out from underneath the cherry tomatoes. So you can really create a wonderful little garden around even a single plant like little baby cherry tomatoes. Um, as you saw in my beginning pictures, I've used the little violas and I've planted all my gnomes playing in amongst the violas. And so they've had some fun there. Uh, you can also go, in fact, let's just go back to those violas uh, quickly and you can see, oopsie, where was I? Ah, where's my, whoops, too far. Went too far, too much, too much. No, one more. There we are. There are the violas in front with a piece of wood and all my gnomes playing in around the bottom of the violas. And um, I've got, I actually even had one, he's disappeared behind the viola. The viola's grown big. I'll have to go move him and take him out so that you can see him. I've also got a swing, which I've brought inside now. And this little swing, uh, let me stop sharing. This little swing, I put the swing in with the violas and there's one swinging away in amongst the violas. And so you can make these yourself or you can buy them. But it's very easy with wood to just bend your wood uh, and, and just keep it clamped until it stays the shape you want. And then just a piece of string, a little piece of uh, um, a um, popsicle stick can be used as the seat and if you find a little gnome he can then sit on there and have have his he can be sitting there playing so it's very very easy uh you don't even need to have anybody on it you can just have your swing uh there and hopefully while nobody's watching something's going to come and swing on the swing you can also, while you're doing that, I've got my little baby gnome here who watches over me and he's got a spade. He's going digging and you could have him digging up the carrots or anything like that with his little spade. He's there to, to help. You can add to your garden a variety of things. You can add little mushrooms. And you can make them very easily with clay and paint them. And then you can put a fairy underneath your mushroom. You can have a little signboard made with a piece of wood and some popsicle sticks. And this one says fairy village, um, fairy, fairy forest and gnome home. So you can make your own little signboards using your popsicle sticks. They work very well and you can just write on it and your writing doesn't matter because it's magical writing anyway. You can have your little fairies and you can go into um, wherever you are walking. This happens to be a, a pod from one of the trees in our forest. And this pod uh, has opened up. And if you put your fairy next to the pod, it really looks so attractive. Now you are using nature within your fairy garden, nature that's already used. Um, the, this, before it opens, looks like this. And I've kept this one the way it is with all the stuff on it. That, again, looks so attractive with your little fairy standing near it or your gnome standing next to it, somewhere in a pot or a garden. You can put all these little things into it. So don't forget that nature can definitely, natural things that you find when you're out for a walk, um, that have, when it, particularly in autumn when there are lots of seeds falling, then it is the ideal way of doing it. Um, and so you are able to uh, do it that way. So all of these things make it really special for you to be able to create. Asha, have you got some more ideas yet? Not yet. Not yet. Once I start creating, once I start creating probably I'll get more ideas then. Absolutely. But have these 
got your, your creative juices going. You're now ready to start thinking of creating yeah. your garden. Now, that's what I was looking for. I was yeah. looking for that to be what you were doing. Right. I'm, I'm, waiting, I'm waiting to go right in there and order online. Great. That'll be awesome. Right. Let's continue. Uh, let me just get through to where we are. Right. Then you can also use little trees. Um, there are many bonsai trees that you can use and many trees you can turn into bonsais by just keeping them in a small amount of soil and continually trimming them. And then what you can do is you can either build your fairy or gnome garden around them or you can bury them in the soil so you can't see that they're in a pot and then create your garden around that. And so then you've got your bonsai tree in your fairy garden and it's created that way. So you can uh, use, there are many different ones. There's an alpine spruce, a Canadian hemlock, a juniper. There are lots of plants that you can get either already bonsai or create your own bonsai. And that's that. then you can make it look the way you would like it to look. But can you imagine in this one right above the get set up, if you have a little fairy peeping out from the tree, I mean, how gorgeous is that? They're playing in the trees. You can, your mind can just go and you can create amazing little gardens with trees and so on in them. So choose your plants wisely. You don't want your plants to take over your fairy garden. So make sure when you're buying them, you buy things that will remain small. You don't want things that are going to grow too big because then they will overtake. Right. Now, here are some things that you can make yourself. You can make using sticks. You can make little benches by just joining the sticks together. You can make little um, uh, what are those things called uh, bridges. You can make a bridge. You can use a gourd um, and then cover the gourd or anything that's that kind of shape. Um, you can take, uh, and then you use pine cones. You break the pieces off the pine cone and you can make a pine cone house. And I mean, how gorgeous is that? But you can find pots that are that sort of shape. Use the pot. Um, I often go to the, we call it the op shop or we call it salvos, and where people have brought things they no longer want, but they are still in good condition. And there are all sorts of things that you can say, oh, I can create and turn that into a little house. I can turn this into a little house. Um, and so you are able to create along the way. You can also um, have your little house where, again, you're using the bottom of the tree. You can create little window boxes up the tree, little window boxes where they can grow. Um, and you can have either somebody outside. Hi, welcome to class. Lovely to have you. Hi, Aida. Very nice to have you in class. Thank you. All right. So we've got, uh, we can make a swing by just using twigs. You take your twigs and you place them across each other and put them on a little piece of wood or anything that you can make to look like wood and then put your swing on that. So you can create your own ones. If you have shells, I have a shell collection and we go to the beach quite often, we find little shells. You can put the shells together and using glue, it looks like the glue is actually water coming down. Now, if you put that in your bathroom and you have a little fairy sitting on one of the shells or two fairies around it, you can create a beautiful magical garden in your bathroom. So that every time you go there to put on your makeup or to wash your hands, you see this beautiful falling water. And so it, it depends on where you want to have this garden. But you can slowly but surely create amazing gardens using all sorts of little things. If you're doing a miniature garden, 
if you're doing a big garden like mine outside, then you would use bigger things. So I've got a combination. In my lounge, I've got this miniature garden um, of a little of little gnomes playing in a garden, uh, while outside I've got the bigger gnomes. So you can decide. The size is immaterial. The size goes from this size right up to the giant size ones. And you can create amazing things. You, uh, you can also create a house using bottles and clay. By putting the bottles in the position you want, you then cover them with clay. I do send you a, a, an example in your uh, email at the end. So you can create excuse me, create your own houses. Everything that's here, you can create. And again, I say to you, go and look at Pinterest and places like that. There are thousands of different ideas of how to make things to create your own fairy garden. And really there are, I, I love some of the things that I see there. Um, they are so creative. And you can see just from those three bottles, the little house that you built there. Very simple, very beautiful. And you can even light it up using um, a tea candles or a light. Now, I have created my own little house for the one in the, dine, in the lounge, but I just used a toilet roll. Let me stop sharing and go to um, speak of you. Oh, wrong speaker. Let's find me. Uh, okay. Uh, James, can you put the spotlight onto me, please? I'm sure he'll do. Here we go. All uh, right. Now, uh, what uh, got to hold it in front of me now. I'm, I'm only just using a background for the first time because I've got a new computer. So before I could use my hands and do everything I wanted. This is made out of a toilet roll and paper on top. I've cut holes in it and made a little door, painted some pictures on the outside like grass. And then I use a one of these lights that are can put on. I put that on mm -hmm. underneath. And I've now lit up my little house. And when I want to have it, I have a lit up house. When I don't want to have it, then it's very easy. I just press the button and the house is no longer lit up for the daytime. So it really is nice. And then I have my little gnomes playing around it. So you can build from as simple as a toilet roll right up to bottles, uh, plastic bottles, glass bottles, you name it. You can create some wonderful fairy gardens that way. So the sky is definitely the limit as to what you can do. Um, so it really does make such a difference if you just let your imagination flow. Think, what can I do with this? I've got this, hmm. I'm sure I could make something with it. Then start imagining what you want to make. And once you've imagined that, you're then able to create even more things. So it really is entirely up to you as to what you build and how you make it. Use nature when you can. If you can't use nature, such as shells or wood or twigs or pine cones, then create from, as I said earlier, using plastic forks, turn them upside down so that the tines face upwards and put the, the handle part into the ground and you put them all next to each other, you've got a wonderful fence. So you can really create such wonderful things along the way. Now here's just a few other ideas of making gardens. Now, I wondered how to make the little birdhouse. That was something that I had to think about. I, I saw an idea and I, I created mine. You use a cork, a wine cork, and then you paint the hole for the birds on the wine cork, put a little hat on it, and you've now got a birdhouse. And you stick a skewer inside and you've got a birdhouse on a stick. And it really looks so attractive. So you can use, or it's not square, it's a round birdhouse. You don't always have to have square. You can have all sorts of things that you want. 
You can also incorporate little animals into your um, fairy garden, little rabbits, little lizards, little frogs, all sorts of small, very gentle creatures because fairies are gentle. So you would include some very, fairly gentle creatures with it. Uh, you can include a swing made out of a tire from a children's toy. Um, and you can also create your own little bird baths uh, using just a little bit of clay to make it. Uh, and so there are a variety of things that you can create. You can also have, if you've got a bigger garden, you can place it between two things. You can make a center part, a fairy garden and the rest somewhere else. But you can certainly add small flowers to all sorts of things. And of course, a big pebble or a big stone makes a, like a, a, a rock in their garden. So you, you then can build around a rock. You can make a rockery and have them climbing up the rockery because they are small. So your bigger stones can become the rockery. So as long as you are using your imagination, you will be able to create a multitude of little gardens. You can certainly buy different things online that will add to your garden, but making is equally uh, good fun. I bought some things and then from there I've seen how it's made and then made my own. You can use a piece of wire and make a spade and a fork and all sorts of things, uh, just creating and using a little bit of imagination as you go along. You can use stones in the garden and put the word welcome on them. And that makes it fun um, to welcome people into the, the little fairy garden, a little stone with the word welcome or fairy home, or you can write on the stones with uh, a little bit of acrylic paint very easily. And it doesn't matter that it doesn't look like perfect writing. That's not the idea. The idea is that it is a natural way of welcoming people into their natural garden. So, I'm hoping from this that you have been able to come up with a few ideas as to what you would like to make as part of your gardens. So, what have you thought about? What are you thinking? Asha, what are you thinking? You're asking me? Yes, yes. Yes, I have the little ones which I've made. So I was thinking of ordering some gnomes and uh, fairies. So I can just place them there. Just a change of scene, yeah. And they also like to move around. So if you put things into one place, after a while, move them to a different place and swap things around because they also like a change of scenery. Right. And it also makes it something new for you. You think, oh, I didn't think of putting him here or her here or, mm -hmm. oh, we need a little animal there. That would look so much mm -hmm. nicer. Where's my rabbit? Go and fetch mm -hmm. it and put it in. And so you can have all the different things. Aida, I know you came in late, but did you see some things that might make it interesting for you? You're on mute. You're on mute at the moment. You're on mute. You could press your space yeah. bar. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah. yes. I yes. I'm thinking to do some stuff. I like the one you I see. <laughs> oh, good. Good. Well, so so now it's given you some ideas. Do you have a garden or do you have an apartment? No, I'm, I'm in the gun, in the candle. You cannot yeah, do so, nothing outside. Just no, like no. I'm thinking so, to do it inside. Yes, there's so much you can do inside. You can build really beautiful little things inside in different rooms. You can have different things in different places. And you, Shirley, are you going to think about a fairy garden? I don't know what, what I will do, honestly. I don't know what I need to do now. But like I'm thinking I have some nice uh, cups. I can use it to plant something with it. Yes. And it would be nice. Yes, yes, definitely. Yeah. A, a, a cup would be like, While you are talking, I'm thinking like what I have, what I need to do. Like 
great. You make me like myself. <laughs> Now, that is what I'm looking for, Aida. That's exactly what I was hoping to do. And surely, you know, yes. I, I, will, I will go on yes. what I'm thinking about. Just one second. Okay. Yes, surely. See these? Yeah. Those are called black thumbs. They don't, they don't grow greenery. They don't, grow, but you don't have to have very much greenery. You can use stones and you can use other things like that. And succulents, you should be able to grow. A succulent. Uh, my husband had the whole house green, but after he died, I had to get rid of them all. They all died. I kind of forget to water them. Uh -huh. Well, <laughs> therefore, a succulent is what you want. You only have to yeah. water it once in a while. Oh, yeah. yes. Now, those you could they, use. They are, yes. the, they are like hiding somewhere, never used. They are cleaner now, and sugar, but they can use it for some plant or something, yes. right? You, you plant the plants in it, and then you, you take some fairies, and you put the fairies or the gnomes into those, yeah. and that they will be beautiful. And you can even have a ladder going up from the ground up to them, uh, so yeah. that they can climb down and climb up the other side and visit each other in the different plants. You could do yeah. a wonderful garden in those. Yes. yes. <laughs> Definitely. And like when, a, a, a box. I can put some like kind of dirt, some green color things, put it with it looks like. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, now when it's out. finished, I want a picture. I want you to send a picture uh, to get I set will. up. <laughs> and then they'll send it to me and I can put it into my presentation. How because I, I don't know how to send it. Uh, help it get set. Help it get set up. I'll send it to you in an email. You'll get okay, it in an good. email. Okay. You'll get it in an email. So that will that will then do it. But nice. Here's one more, Sue. Ah, yeah. Oh, lift up a little. Oh, let's just hang on. I need to, I need to make oh lovely. Yes. Just your thing, two plants in there. Oh, some wow. stones. That's nice. Beautiful. Yeah. Really? I can put fairies in this now. Uh -huh. Definitely. That would be lovely. Definitely. Oh, I that have is another one awesome. also. Oh, good. He's going to pitch you another one. That's awesome. <laughs> uh -huh. Asha, and Jinda, where are you from? I'm from India. Yeah, I thought so. Where and you, I, I'm from Iraq. Iraq. Oh, oh. fantastic. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's you see, you've got nice. it on its side. And so it makes for, for, for doing that is beautiful. Uh, I, I, I love, I love the elephant God. He's, he's awesome. Uh, he, so now I, I can I, move things around. Now I can move things around. I got a lot of ideas from you now. Great. <laughs> that's the idea. Now that's made the class worthwhile. You've got ideas and you're ready to start thinking of thank you, what you're doing. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for being in class and getting ideas. Um, it's been great. You can certainly send pictures to Liz at getsetup.io. She will pass them on to me or to help at Get Set Up either. If you want a recording Amazing. as well, you get it at help at Get Set Up. Some of the other classes I've got are Birds in My Garden, Come and Make Friends, and What's on Your Bucket List. Um, I've also got classes like Trivia, School Days, Road Trips. Um, we're even doing a, uh, a games night on Friday night. Well, it's morning for me, but it's night for, for America, a games night. Uh, we're doing categories. So there's all sorts of things that are, are coming out from uh, different classes coming out. I have 11 different classes every week. And they constantly changing. So there's, there is definitely a variety that you can see and do. Uh, you will get notes from me with some ideas.
uh, and some other classes that you might want to go to. You can send a feedback and anything else you'd like us to do, please fill it in on there so that we can see and do. Um, the other day, somebody asked me, said, you know, nobody, very few people know Perth. It's on the west coast of Australia. Everybody knows the east coast of Australia. Won't you do a talk on Perth? And next Friday, I'm doing so, you see, it comes from what people are interested in. Uh, then we create classes so that people are able to see and hear the things they want to hear. So if you've got ideas, please let us know. If you want to invite a friend to come to a particular class, when you book, you can click the invite a friend and send them an email and then they'll be able to book the class too. That's a new feature that's coming in. Um, and if you want to host an interest group, something you're really interested in, um, Shirley does a few of those, which is awesome. Um, and if you've got any new class ideas or uh, want to request your session, please go to help at getsetup.io. They will certainly help you. I do put it in my email as well. So thank you, everyone, for being in class. It's been great having all of you with us. Um, anybody got anything they'd like to say before we close for the day? Uh, thank you, Asha. Uh, thank you, Aida. Thank you, it was Shirley. lovely being here. It was lovely being here. Good. Well, I hope to see you in other classes as we I go will, along. Yeah. Uh, sure. we, if, you, if you like creating, Asha, probably in two weeks time I think it is or it could even be three I'm going to be doing a class where we create flowers and uh, out of paper and cardboard and things like that so uh, that's also a nice creative one that is going to be coming up all right well thank you everyone for being thank in you. class thank you James for thank all you your so little much. bits that you've been putting in this the chat box for us much appreciated have a lovely day everyone have a lovely evening Shirley bye right. bye bye